right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord be with you, that he guides you, he protects you, he comforts you, that you become more strong and wise in the Lord, that you put him first. You center everything around him. You report to him for every situation and decision you have to make. And I just hope that your mental health gets better. You have better thinking patterns. You could keep your mind on things above that's pure, just, acceptable, holy in his sight. And I just hope that you can help others around you as well within your situation with what you have. Amen. All right. So I hope that you all had a blessed day. You know, God woke us up this morning, so we got to be grateful for that. If we didn't have the best day, uh, be thankful that we're home safe alive. Be thankful that you have clothes on your back. You have food in your belly. You have a roof over your head. Amen. So. We have to appreciate the little things from here on out. Amen. We can't always just glorify the big stuff. You have to thank God for the little things too. Amen. So in today's message, I'm going to continue reading the book of Genesis chapter 21 and upward. I believe this goes into Sarah giving birth to Isaac. All right. So we're going to go through with that. And I already talked about in the Genesis series how um, the Lord made Ishmael a great mighty nation, a great mighty people. But God gave Isaac that covenant and that promise. Amen. So. We're just going to keep continuing with the history of Israel, things of that nature, and then close out and go from there, you know. So I hope that this upcoming week is this week is good for you all and blessed. And I pray that you you all have better days from here on out. All right. A new season is approaching. We're about to approach spring season, spring equinox. Um, daylight savings is hitting, I believe, this weekend. So uh, be aware of the time switch, the, the hour back or whatnot this weekend, daylight savings. So. Let us all be aware of everything going on, all four corners of the earth. Let's be mindful of other situations. Let's have compassion and always pray for one another, uplift one another, encourage one another, support each other. Amen. No time to be judgmental or critical of anybody. Let's all get it together and fight the good fight together. Amen. So I'm going to see you and go from here. So here we go. Book of Genesis, chapter 21. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he has said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And God and God called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God commanded him. As God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when the son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, so that all the hear with laugh with me, all the laughter be with me. And she said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would have given children, uh, given her a, ch- a child, for I have born, a son, born him a son in this old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, Hagar the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman, and her son, for the son of, his, of this bondwoman shall not be an heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. As you can see here, so Isaac's born and whatnot, and Sarah, you know, sees Ishmael and feels a certain way about it. You know what I mean? She feels a certain type of way about it. So uh, Sarah was not one to be around them or deal with them. But Abraham was a bit bothered and disturbed by it because at the end of the day, that was still his son, you know. So just a little family conflict, a little family issues going on. But um, you know, things are like that, you know. So let's continue reading. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman and all that Sarah has said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So God settled it through there, through that situation. And also the son of the bondwoman, I will make a nation because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away as she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs and she went and sat her down over against him in a good way off as it were a bow shot for she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar, Hagar out of heaven, and said to her, What's wrong, Hagar? 
Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad. Where is he? Where he is? Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. So as you can see, she was in wilderness, kind of wandered off, stranded, like kind of helpless in a vulnerable situation. She cried out to God, and God still helped her. Even though she was Egyptian and um, Sarah was really angry with her, God was still using her. God was still using that situation. That's why it's important that we don't lean on our own understanding or our own frustrations, our own ways of seeing things, because God could still make good, great things out of anything. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us not be so hung up in situations with people. You get what I'm saying? But this is just a clear example of day to day things that happen throughout life in general, also in history and all types of households, you know, so. Um, that's why I love the book of Ephesians when it talks about not wrestling against flesh and blood, you know what I mean? Because um, things can be working out, amen? God can make things happen, so he will make things happen, amen? So we have to put aside our differences and our own understandings, uh, our own understandings in order for uh, God to have his way. We can't disrupt what God is going to do through anybody, amen? And that was kind of Sarah's thing. Sarah, she was just leaning on her own understanding, which which was her right, you know what I'm saying? But Sarah was just feeling a certain way about it, but, you know, you can't have your way all the time. It's all about God's way, amen, and at the end of the day, if God's going to use somebody, if God's going to use a nation, then let it be, all right? So God does as he pleases. His ways is higher than our ways. His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. His word doesn't come back void, amen? When he says he's going to make Ishmael a great mighty nation, a great people, it's, that's going to happen, and Sarah can't do nothing about it, <laughs> so deal with it, right? So... That's basically what it is. All right, so let's continue this reading. All right, all right, all right. And let's see what we have. All right. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad a drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Ambulage and Fiscal, Fiscal, the chief captain of his host, spoke unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that everything he does. Now, therefore, swear unto me here by God that thou will not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do to me and to the land wherein thou hast journeyed, sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Ambulage because of a well of water, which Ambulage's servants had violently taken away. And Ambulage said, I would not the one who's, who's done this thing, neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard, have I heard of it, but today. And Abraham took ox and sheep and gave them to Ambulage, and both of them made a covenant. So Abraham and Ambulage made an agreement, an oath, and they pledged towards each other about wanting to do right by each other with kindness and you know, balancing things out. Abraham was feeling a certain way about the certain things that was going around Ambulage, but Ambulage was telling him, like, hey, bro, I didn't do that. So it's a little misunderstanding, but they made up for it. They made a covenant to come into agreement and uh, went from there, okay? So it's important for brothers to uh, come into agreement about things and put things aside and balancing things out, better communication, you know, honoring each other's word, doing right by each other with actions as well. Uh, God really honors how we treat people. He really does, you know what I mean? So you got to be a man of your word, hallelujah. And I, and I speak for myself, too. I'm pretty sure all of us have not always been a man of our word, a woman of our word. We never really kept our uh, part of the deal, our bargain or whatnot, but we have to be better about that. When it comes to deals or agreements or covenants, we have to be better about honoring um, things that we say or do to other, others, amen. So let's continue from there. And Abraham said, seven lambs of the flock by themselves. And Ambulance said unto Abraham, what's the meaning for these seven lambs, which thou hast set by themselves? And he said, for these seven lambs shall thou take of my hand. They shall be witnesses unto me that I have digged this well. Wherefore, he called that place Beersheba, because there, there swore, they swore both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba, that Ambulance rose up and Pephiscol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove of Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. Hallelujah. All right, so let's continue with the book of Genesis, chapter 22. All right, book of Genesis, chapter 22. And it came to pass that after these things, that God did tempt Abraham, and then said unto him, Abraham, 
And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest a lot, who thou lovest, and go into the land of Moriah and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye in here, here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham's father, said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb of the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar, an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and said, here I am. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest the God, that God, that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. So as you can see here, God told Abraham to go and kill his son, sacrifice him. And Abraham really went through it and was about to do it, but the angel intervened and stopped it. And the angel said, Oh, no, chill, chill. And he said, No. Nah. Now I know you really love God and you obey him and you really fear him. So Abraham was about to give up his own son just for the sake of obeying God. That's how much Abraham obeyed God, that Abraham would have done anything for the Lord. So when the Lord tested him and saw that out of him, he knew like this is a man that is faithful. That's a man that is obedient and things of that nature. And that's a very crazy way to test somebody. That's a very wild way to uh, you you know, do that. But that the way the Lord has his way of doing things to certain people, you know what I mean? But that is a crazy way of going about it. And it's just crazy. So and then when you fast forward all the way to the new covenant, the heavenly father sacrificed his only begotten son, Christ, for all of our sins, all of our transgressions, all of our iniquities. So his blood made it right. And with Israel, ancient times, Israel always did burnt offerings, sin offerings, guilt offerings, all types of different um, customs according to of the Torah, you know what I mean? We had 613 laws and commandments about all types of things. And certain um, certain customs we did was based around burnt offerings, killing animals, things of that nature, sin offerings, all those different things. So um, it's crazy that Abraham was really about to go through with that. So, you know, but that shows you just not only I have that example of Abraham, but even in our lives, God might call us to do crazy things. And we might not understand it. We might not even want to agree with it. We might not even want to really do it. But um, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Book of Proverbs says that. So let us be mindful about not leaning on our own understanding. Because that's how you end up disobeying God. When you want to do things your way and what have you. You get what I'm saying? Because the Lord, he does test us. He does try us. You know, we, he, he, he refines us like silver and gold. He tests us. You know what I mean? So um, remember, God is going to test our faith, our character, our faithfulness to him, how steadfast we are towards him. He tests us through situations, through encounters with certain people. Um, and you got to pass those tests. You got to pass those trials and tribulations. You have to pass those hardships. Amen. You you, you know, that trust between you and God got to be stronger and better. Amen. So always obey the most high. All right. And always keep that faith. All right. So let's continue reading. Okay, let's continue. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And Jehovah Jireh means 
God my provider. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld my son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his, unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. So you see God establishing that covenant through Isaac and to all nations and to people. Hallelujah. So it's a blessing that Abraham is a father of many nations and that people all four corners of the earth are able to inherit the promise as well. That's why we have to be appreciative of Christ dying for our sins and giving us eternal life in a hundredfold and things of that nature because it all started from, from the beginning of time. Amen. So let's see what we have here. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, Milcah, she has also borne children unto thy brother Nahor, Nahor, Huz his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, Booz his brother, and Kimul, the father of Aram, and Shesed, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Jid, Jitlaf, and Bethul. And Bethul begot Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And his, and his concubine, whose name was Reuma, she bare also Teba, and Gaham, and Thashash, and Maka. And Sarah was a hundred years old, was a hundred and seven and twenty. Hold on. My bad, y'all. Sarah was a hundred and twenty seven years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kerjath Arba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. So you can see how um, Sarah passed away and then Abraham weeped for her. So um, usually uh, it was different times, periods of a man's lifeline, lifetime and a woman's lifetime. Nowadays, women live longer than men because men today usually go away like in their 40s and 50s due to like different health problems, stress, things of that nature. But back then, the men were able to outlive women. The men were able to pass down patriarchy and to live long, you know. So this is a different scenario with Sarah passing before Abraham. Right, let's continue reading. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spoke unto his sons, Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us, in the choice of our spectacles. Bury thy dead, none of us shall withhold from thee, from thee his specular, but that thou must bury thy dead. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. And he, and he commend, communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me, and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field. For as much money as it is worth, he shall give it to me for a possession of a burying place among you. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephron the Hittites answered Abraham and the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went in at the gate of the city, saying, Nay, my Lord, hear me. The field give I thee, I give thee, and the cave that is in there in it, I give it to thee. And the presence of the sons of my people, I gave it to thee, bury thy dead. And Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land. And he spoke unto Ephron and the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if thou give, will give it, I pray thee, hear me, I will give thee money for the field, take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying unto him, My Lord, hearken unto me, the land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that between me and thee? Bury thee, therefore thy dead. And Abraham hearkened to Ephron, and Abraham, and Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named an audience of the sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. And the field of Ephron, which was in Malkapa, 
Mac Pele, which was before memory, the field and the cave, which was there in and all the trees that were in the field that were in all the borders round about were made sure unto Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth before all that went to the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, Machpelah, before Mamre, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan, and the field and the cave that is therein, were made sure to Abraham for a possession of a burial place by the sons of Heth. So there you see Abraham was dealing with the different people just to bury his wife Sarah, and Abraham was going through a very difficult process with that, so he had no problem paying for an arrangement the way he wanted to. Um, 400 shekels of silver in that time period was worth a lot. So he paid a lot just to bury his wife, Sarah. He wanted to do it in honor in a certain way um, and what have you. So Abraham was mourning and going through a difficult time and just going through with that process. But Abraham understood that both him and his wife were growing old and they understood that they lived a full life. They lived a blessed full life for God and they had no regrets. Amen. And they were able to carry out all of God's um, callings and orders. You know, they were able to obey God all the way to the end of their lives. And God even blessed them as they got older. Amen. They didn't die from health problems or whatnot. God blessed their health. God blessed their marriage. God blessed their lives and their children. Amen. So, you know, if we're ever going through a process of mourning for someone or what have you, um, always handle it with honor. And, you know, Christ even talked about those who weep and mourn, they shall be comforted. So um, everybody goes through different seasons throughout their lifetimes, you know, so. All in all, you always want to honor God in everything that you do and honor people as well. So Abraham, he always honored God. He honored his family and he definitely honored his wife, man. You know, that was definitely a tough thing for Abraham to go through because, excuse me, Sarah was always by Abraham's side. Even when she laughed at him or <laughs> laughed at what God was telling him, she was still loyal. She was faithful. Um, Sarah, as Abraham is the father of many nations, Sarah is the mother of many nations, you know, so... Um, Sarah was loyal to God and to her husband. And um, if she wasn't like Job's wife, <laughs> when Job was going through those things and Job's wife was telling Job to curse God and all that, nah, he, Sarah was a good wife. She was an excellent wife. Amen. That's, she was blessed. So um, that was a tough process for Abraham to do it. But they were both at that age and they both knew how to let go and let God. Amen. So I'm going to continue reading the book of Genesis chapter 24. And it just closed out from there, all right? So here we go. The book of Genesis, chapter 24. Well, I'm going to continue past 24. Let's see how it goes. Let me see. All right, Genesis, chapter 24. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest son, his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife until my son, the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. All right. But thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land, must I need to bring thy son again unto the land from where th thou is coming. And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spoke unto me, and that swore unto me, saying unto thy seed, Will I give this land? He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this oath. Only not my, only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham and his master and swore to him concerning the matter. And the servant, the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master, and departed for all the goods of his master were in this hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. So as you can see, like, um. You know, Abraham's servant, you know, Abraham's like getting old. He's on his deathbed. He's just chilling back, relaxing, sleeping, waking up, sleeping. And he's telling his servant all these things to give out. Because when you're at that time period of that old age and you know it's your time to go, you always got to leave things behind. You got to leave out orders, inheritances, wealth, commands, things concerning the bloodline, 
things of that nature. And that's the way God intended for us. He intended for us to live long, full, blessed lives and um, a life filled with obeying the Lord and leaving a legacy behind, a legacy of the Lord. Amen. Like you pass down obeying God, you pass down wealth and possessions, you pass down legacy, honor, you know, things of that nature. But this generation doesn't really honor that. This generation, we don't really honor. This generation doesn't honor God. It doesn't honor wealth. It doesn't honor inheritances. It doesn't honor legacy. You get what I'm saying? Like the way certain families are built, the way certain communities are made today, it's very uh, like <laughs> it's not how God intended it. You get what I'm saying? Because we're so lost as a people. We're so scattered. And so this this society is so Babylonian. This society is so um, ungodly that nobody practices godly things. You get what I'm saying? So leaving leaving behind a legacy of obeying God, that's a blessing and that's godly. You know, leaving behind wealth of possessions to make sure the family's straight, that's a blessing. Um, wanting to keep your bloodline pure, that's a blessing. When when Abraham was telling his servant this concerning Isaac, he's like, yo, make sure my, my son Isaac gets certain wives. You know, like you want certain women. You don't want your son just marrying anybody or getting anybody pregnant. You want your son only dealing with certain women, you know? So it was, we had a real culture. We had a real code we lived by. We had a real way of living um, a godly, pure life. You get what I'm saying? But you look at society today, I mean, nobody, none of us come from that. You get what I'm saying? Like none of us, our families, the type of families we're born into, the type of households people are raised in, you're dealt with the cards you're dealt with, you know? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it is understand. It's, it's important to understand how things were initially made to be. You get what I'm saying? So all in all, we live in a broken society. The nuclear home is broken. Traditions and things of that nature are broken. I want to say tradition, but just the, the order and the history of how... We're really supposed to get things done. Our heritage, all that stuff has been just kind of challenged and broken. So um, the beauty of all of it is Christ died for our sins and we're able to have eternal life in a hundredfold and we're able to have treasures in heaven. We're able to have our name on the Lamb's book of life, the crown, the robe, everlasting life, eternal life. That's our way of making up for all this broken stuff that we dealt with on earth. Amen. Like, like all this stuff that's been broken, stripped down, you, you know, scattered, just ripped to the bone. We will get all that back in the afterlife. Amen. So that's kind of what, that's why Christ was always talking about storing up your treasures in heaven and not down here. You get what I'm saying? Because down here, Everything's temporary. Everything's not always fulfilling. You know what I'm saying? So it's just interesting how you saw Abraham go out and you compare it to society today. And it's just like, man, you know, are people today really obeying God and leaving behind a legacy of following the Lord? Are people today really obeying the Most High? Are people really taking care of their families knowing they're going to die? You know, like it's crazy. And I know this might switch off to a little carnal subject, but. You notice like when a lot of celebrity men die, right? Like a lot of famous singers or famous people, when they leave an inheritance behind, they don't be leaving nothing for their children or their wives. <laughs> like it'd be crazy, right? It's crazy how when a certain famous person dies, how um, there's always issues with the estate. It's always issues with a person's trademarks or brand or... Um, inheritance those though like you know the wills that stuff get, divides families you know what i mean a lot of celebrity men have went away and like didn't look out for their kids didn't look out for their wife like crazy stuff but um that's just wild it's not even celebrities it's random people too it's people who aren't celebrities who had a certain way of splitting the pie dividing the will those things cause a lot of fractures in families those things cause a lot of it causes a lot of bad blood, man. You know what I mean? Like families will break up or set be divided over the stuff, man. That's how crazy it get. <laughs> you know what I mean? See, with Abraham, he he you know he passed it down to Isaac. It was nothing. You know, it was it was honorable. You know what I'm saying? It was no divide about it, no argument, no disagreement. It was what it was. It was a respect of covenant promising about it. You get what I'm saying? When you're passing down covenants and promises and blessings, there's no divide or anger about that. When you're just passing down your estate or just your money or just your trademark, you know, all that stuff, 
man, that stuff caused a lot of mixed emotions. So, yeah, it's crazy how things were back then and you look at how things are now. It's kind of wild. All right, so let's continue with this reading. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me a good speed this way and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down the pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, drink. And I will give thy camels drink also, let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahur, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, and the woman was very beautiful, a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well, and filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her, and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord, and she hasted, and let down her patch her pitcher upon her hand, and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also, until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough to the trough, and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord has made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of a half of a shekel weight and two braces for her hands of ten shackles weight of gold and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in my father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she born to Nahor. She said, Moreover to him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the woman ran and told them of the mothers, and told her her mother. And the woman ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebecca had a brother, and his name his name was Laban. Laban, Laban ran out unto the men unto the well, and it came to pass when he saw the earring and the bracelet upon his sister's hands, when he heard the words of his Rebecca's sister saying, "Thus spoke the man unto me that he came into the man." And behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, where thou, wherefore stand thou without? For I prepare the house and room for the camels. And a man came into the house, and he ungirded his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. I, I, I told my Aaron, and he sped, speak, speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant, and the Lord has blessed my masters greatly. And he is he has become great. He has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And to him, he had given all he had. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go into my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure, the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife from my son of my kindred, and of my father's house. Then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. When thou come to the kindred, and if they give not thee the one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day into the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper the way my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin come forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she said to me, Both drink thou 
and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord has appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down into the well and drew water, and I said unto her, Let me drink, and I pray thee. And she made me haste, and let down her pitcher from her shoulder, and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. I drink, and she made the camels drink also. I asked, I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, nay, her son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughters unto a son. Now, if ye deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceed from the Lord, we cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go. Let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth, and bowing his head down to the Lord. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the woman abide with us a few days, at least ten. After that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord has prospered my way, send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, Well, we will call the woman and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And then they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Now look at that. Be a mother of thousands of millions of thy seed. Wow, blessings, right? And Rebekah arose and her women, and they rode upon the camels and followed the men, the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well, Lahai Lahai Roy, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the event tide and lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walk in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all these things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into her mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. She became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So that's going to be the end of Genesis reading just for today. We're going to continue it. And there you have it, Genesis chapter 24. So you see, basically, Abraham sent out his older servant to, you know, get a wife for his son Isaac to keep passing down the blessings and the covenant that God had promised Abraham. So the servant went all the way out to the land to go find Rebekah, find a woman. So it's basically like a matchmaking type of thing, right? But keep within um, the region, we keep within the family ties. And they were able to find a woman and follow through with Abraham's uh, command. And it went from there. And what's beautiful about this is that um, Abraham and Isaac, they were kind of mourning over Sarah still. They were still having a hard time dealing with her death. And Isaac was just in the field worshiping and meditating on the Lord, just in the field. And then the woman comes off her camel and meets him. And they met each other. They got married. They made love. They got busy. <laughs> and the scripture says that she comforted him from Sarah's death. So Isaac was having a hard time dealing with his mother's passing. And his wife came and made him feel better about it. So that's the beauty of having a good woman in your life. It just shows you how a good woman comes a long way. And it's important for brothers to be loved, and especially during hard times, you know. And it's very beautiful how that was laid out in the book of Genesis 24. So um, very awesome thing, man. And let's all keep praising the Lord and keep doing right by the Lord and by people. Amen. So 
There you have it, y'all, all right? What I would love to do as I close out is give all the glory to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and praise His only begotten Son who died for our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. And also end off with the prayer and the priestly blessing. All right? So here we go. Yes. Hallelujah. He is the Adam, the second Adam. Yes, the last Adam. He is the advocate, the almighty, the true and living God, the, off, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. The apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord. The atonement sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessing only potent, the blessing only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the wonderful counselor, hallelujah, the government rests on his shoulders, amen. Yes, he is the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father. Yes, he is the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, the king of Israel. Yes, hallelujah, he is the king of kings, amen, he is the king of kings, the lord of lords. Yes, king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the light of the world. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, Ha, Yeshua, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Elohim, our righteousness, the Father of the fatherless, the Father of lights. Amen. Yes, he is the Lord of all, the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords, the man from heaven, the man of sorrows, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant. The Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and Savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice to Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the revelation, the revelator, the righteous branch, the resurrector. Amen. He is the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shalom, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, some of the blessed, some of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. Yes, he is the way. He is the way, truth, and life. The sustainer, the sufficient one, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of Yah, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Elohim, the word of Yahweh Shai, Yeshua Hamashiach. Yes, he is the word of life. Yes, he is the word. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. We touch and agree. We serve an awesome creator, and the son is amazing for dying for our sins. Yes, beautiful creator full of promises covenants and fulfillment amen let us all fear the lord and praise him give him honor give him praise give him glory get up and shout get up and dance get up clap your hands praise him with an instrument praise him with your mouth do what you got to do just call on him bow down to him amen keep praying towards him keep keep those petitions prayer requests thanksgivings all those things he 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 will supply all your needs amen amen Yes, if our earthly father gives many gifts to his children, how much more can a heavenly father give to his children? Hallelujah. Call out on his name. Cry out to him. Amen. Amen, y'all. Yes, in the authority and the power and name of Jesus Christ, you are redeemed, renewed, restored, healed. He fixed your situation. He fixed your problems. He's turning it around. He's strengthening you. He's making you love more often. He's making your heart more warm. He's making you more generous. Amen. Yes, new beginning, new footsteps, new path, new beginnings, fresh starts. Amen. New seasons. Amen. Yes, he's doing a new thing. Hallelujah. The former things are old and passed away. He's doing a new thing. Yes. Let's all be in alignment and agreement. Let's all be obedient. Let's stay on this narrow path. Let's fight the good fight. Amen. Amen. Let's encourage each other. The army of God. 
Yes. Keep on the armor of God. Hallelujah. Keep that double-edged sword. Keep that word on you. Amen. Slay the enemy with the word. Amen. Yes. So there you have it, y'all. All right. That was just the book of Genesis reading. And we'll continue that series all, all the way through. Amen. So that's that, y'all. All right. I hope you all had a blessed day and I hope you have better blessed days coming forward. I hope that whatever the Lord has in store for you, that you embrace it, you handle it and you share with others as well. Be generous. Amen. That's that, y'all. All right. So there you have it. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized. You start your life over for the most high. I pray that you repent, have new beginnings. And I just hope that the Lord keeps turning your life around. The Lord just keep, he keeps pouring out his spirit and his love towards you. He keeps doing those wonders and miracles and signs for you. And that you handle your business. Amen. And that's that, y'all. Let's close out with the priestly blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Shalom. Jarvis Kingston, I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.